everybody, it's David Dickey here with the Brown Home Group at Keller Williams. Today we have one of our preferred uh, home inspectors, Alberto Cruz. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Facebook. His contact information is above us. Number is 407 300 5330. He's amazing. He's got a great team of people that are bilingual, um, they service all of the greater Orlando area. Um, we got a few questions we want to ask him, and if you guys have anything else that comes up, we'd love to be able to ask him as well. Um, we'll kind of get right into it. Um, why don't you go ahead and tell us how you got started in, uh, in inspections? Okay, perfect. So back in high school, so this is 2009, um, I worked with a renovation company who they pretty much did flips, and I worked pretty much as a foreman. And every time we finished a project, a home inspector would come in and tell us pretty much what we missed, and then we'd handle those details out. He'd come back, tell us we're good to go, and then we'd put the house on the market. Um, I joined the military in uh, 2000, and 10, uh, I did my six years, came back, after coming back from Afghanistan, uh, my wife had gotten into real estate while I was away, and when I got back from overseas, um, she was just super excited to tell me that um, I probably had a future in home inspections, um, just with my renovation experience and then my law enforcement experience, you know, professionalism being a big thing um, in my company and, and in myself to make sure that we always do the best that we can with, what, with pretty much what we got. Um, and that's how I got into home inspections. So I got I got my license in 2014. Is that well, now five years later? Here we are. Awesome. How big is your team right now? All right, we have a uh, group of three. So our team is uh, three, three licensed home inspectors. Um, we're one of the very few multi inspection companies here in Central Florida. So very that's cool. That's awesome. Well, thank you for your service. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. A um, couple of questions in regards to home inspecting. Um, when would you say would be the best time to actually call a home inspector? All right, so a home inspector, um, as far as contacting him, it would be right after you go out, obviously with the realtor, you right. see the house you like, you put in a contract, the contract gets accepted, and then either the realtor gives us a call usually to set it up, if not the buyer. Um, realtors a lot of times will give them obviously options of their home inspection companies in which they prefer, um, and then the client uh, chooses the home inspection company that, that they prefer to, to call. And then um, once they give us a call, we could typically schedule that inspection within uh, one or three days. And depending on obviously the inspection uh, inspection period, that's pretty much what the biggest uh, biggest issue comes when, when scheduling. Okay, absolutely. Um, now, in regards to home inspection, what would be the process and turnaround time for an average home inspector? Okay, so as far as a home inspection, uh, home inspection, as far as for, for my team, on average, is two uh, to three hours, depending on the condition and the size of the home, obviously. Um, we we always start off in the, in, the, in the exterior of the home, then we go off into the interior, the roof structure. Um, we inspect everything in the home, anything that is in not new condition or not working as it should, is what, is what gets put on the report so that we could also negotiate either costs, repairs, or at least the buyer knows what they're getting into whenever they move into the house. Absolutely, that's awesome, it's really important. Yes, sir. Um, in regards to home inspection, who would you guys recommend to be present? Okay, um, for inspections, we recommend uh, for the buyer and a buyer's agent to be present if they can. We have e-key access, so we can get into houses without anybody being present, or if okay. the house has a lockbox code, we're licensed by the state, um, we're, we're with DBPR, if there's any issues pertaining to the to the inspection or if there was any damages obviously while we were there um, we're always covered we're insured uh, we always recommend for our buyers and our buyers agents to be there because our home inspection reports are designed to to look bad in a sense you see the big red arrows big uh big red circles that are pretty much to evaluate repair replace an item um, a lot of times if you're present at the inspection we get obviously uh give more advice as to what the repair would cost, um, who do you have to contact, or if there's any any ways as far as what's the best route to go about an issue. Um, we could typically explain that at an inspection way better than on a report. Or for you to call us after you read the report, kind of worrisome as to what you read. Absolutely, yeah, I can vouch for that. I mean, I, they've done almost all the inspections for me personally, and they always take the time to walk around the property, show us all the areas of concern. And especially having a buyer there, it, the professionalism, and they feel so much more comfortable, even if there is a major issue with the house, it's explained more in detail, and we can go uh, handle it however it needs to be done. So we, we definitely appreciate that. Yep, yep. We, uh, we recommend for the sellers, um, sellers, 
sometimes being there can make things a little awkward for the buyers or the Absolutely. buyer's agents but sometimes they're just you know did you find anything did you find anything so they could be somewhat distracting um while they're there and obviously if they have pets make sure the pets get put away things like that um but buyers and buyers agents like i said if they uh buyer and the birds if they can be present be present if not no worries Absolutely. And, and kind of going off of that, when would you uh, recommend for a buyer or a buyer's agent to show up? You want them there the, what, the second you start? You want them to come a little bit later? Good question. All right. So um, preferably as a home inspector, a perfect scenario would be for the buyer to get there an hour after we start. So that way we're, we would be done with the exterior of the home, already be moved into the inside. And that way uh, you're not kind of going around in circles for two, three hours. You'll be there towards the end. In case you want to measure any rooms or if you have any ideas as far as things you want to do to the interior you could take that opportunity during the inspection um, to do those things and at the end like i said we'll do a walkthrough make sure you have a great understanding as to what you're purchasing and if you have any questions we could handle that there that's awesome so you're saying an average home inspection would take between two and three hours for normal home. awesome um now can you go over a, a couple of different types of inspections that somebody might experience or need all right, so the basic general home inspection where we where we uh, illustrate for you the condition of the home and that's the roof, electric, plumbing, AC, the structure, interior, exterior, anything that is in not new condition or not working as it should gets put on the report so you can negotiate repairs, costs, or at least you know what you're buying before you move in. All right, then there's uh, insurance inspections, which is the wind mitigation and the four point. The wind mitigation is an insurance inspection that pretty much tells the insurance company how much wind the house holds in case of a hurricane. So based off of categories, that's the shape of the roof, how is that roof held to the held to the trusses, how are those trusses held to the wall, and when was that roof replaced, tells the insurance company how strong that house is in case of a hurricane. Um, and my clients typically on average save about 35% off their insurance premium with the wind mitigation. Wow. Yeah. The four point is for homes that are older, uh, older meaning 25 years or older. Uh, 1996 for me is the cutoff year to where I always add the four points in the inspection so that we don't go around later on in the future, I get that phone call, hey, I need a four point because the house is from 93. I already put that in the report so that way you have it whenever you get it. Um, and what they look for in the four point are the four main characteristics of a home being the roof, AC, electric and plumbing. All right, because there were some materials and some products that have been discontinued since they came out due to faulty products. Um, they're just not lasting or, or they have actual safety issues. All right, things that, that kind of go on that would be a red flag would be like FPE panel, polybutylene, aluminum wiring. Oh, yeah. Um, if the roof has been changed and it's original from 1990, obviously, those things come up as red flags. And that's how the insurance company ends up kind of giving you a quote based on those uh, those details. Gotcha. Okay. Um, now, in regards to new construction, we get a lot of questions on that. Um, should you get an inspection on a new construction? When should you get it? Like, what would be the purpose of that? All right. So, for new construction, um, there's there's two different inspections. We we uh, we do a phase inspection, or we will check the house before they pour the foundation, before they what we call pre drywall. So the house would be just pretty much framed up, roof would be installed. Um, all the electric would be installed, air vents, uh, plumbing ways, plumbing supply, and we'll go in while, before they put the drywall up, make sure everything's nice and plumb, nice and straight, um, make sure everything's level. So when they put the drywall, you don't have any inconsistencies with how everything comes out. Also, um, things like grading elevation is a big thing to check at that, at that point in time. And then the last is the final inspection. So pretty much after the entire house is finished, um, we, we uh, we make sure the AC is working correctly, the appliances are working correctly, water heater, everything from top to bottom. Okay, awesome. Yeah, I mean, I could definitely see where that would be uh, beneficial. Um, now, yeah, I guess for more, this would be more for a seller standpoint, um, how would they prepare to have their home inspected? All right, so for a seller, um, if I was gonna put my house on the market right now and I knew my home inspector was coming within a few days, um, make sure all the main principles in the house are accessible. Make sure you can get to the water heater, to the electric panel, um, underneath the sinks, if you have uh, items under there, like put cleaning products underneath the sinks, so I don't have to take all those things out to take our pictures okay. and then put it all back. Um, closets, areas like that. 
uh, furniture and things that are our inspections are non-invasive so if there's a lot of furniture a lot of uh, personal belongings it just means that you're kind of getting a weaker inspection in a sense because we're not going to be moving everything to kind of get there so the more um, accessible a house is to get around the better uh, sure. definitely i would also replace light uh, light bulbs because we we could put them as electrical issues when all of this is just a one or two other light bulb so change out light bulbs uh, fire alarms, put batteries, change them out if they're old and yellow. Um, that way, just less things to to put on the report. No, that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, and then you know, one of the other questions I had that you kind of touched on is uh, what would be like major red flags for insurance companies. I know you mentioned like plumbing and electrical and stuff. Is that really what they're looking for most of the time? Yes. All right. So for electrical, um, Federal Pacific. So it's for pretty much houses from the six uh, from fifties to seventies. Okay. Um, FPE panels were or real popular. Um, and we always recommend for that to be replaced. Um, aluminum wiring was from the 70s, uh, late 50s to 70s as well. Aluminum wiring we always recommend to be replaced, if not modified. Polybutylene uh, from 85 to 96. Also, it's a plastic gray piping that we always recommend to be replaced. Um, and those are pretty much the three, the three major ones that we go looking for when we do inspections. Awesome. I mean, that's really all we had for uh, GoPro today. Um, if you guys have any other questions, feel free to reach out to myself or reach out to Alberto. Like I said, his information's up there. Um, they, they work every single day. They're absolutely amazing, and we really appreciate everything we do, or everything they do, not we do. You have anything else you want to add in there? Um, I think we got all of the... Uh, yeah, we, we got all the main points we wanted to get. We thank you all for tuning in. You all have a great Monday, and we'll see you at the same time next week. Perfect. Thanks so much.